and welcome back meteorology students. Here's our next lecture, which will be on synaptic meteorology and wind. So we'll talk a little bit about weather maps, what you see on weather maps, and also uh, how high and low pressure help determine our weather in a given area. Okay, so when we talk about synoptic meteorology, the word synoptic means that we view it together, or we view it at a common point. Time is the common point that we're looking at. And that's why we start this class this year with uh, Zulu time, because Zulu time is the same time throughout the world. You still need to know which time zone you're in. For example, we're in the Eastern time zone, so during Eastern um, Standard Time, we subtract four hours from the Zulu time. And in Eastern Daylight Time, we subtract five hours from the um, Zulu time. The size of the weather patterns we're looking at, they range upwards from about 620 miles to, across, to about 1,500 miles. So we look at large weather patterns across the entire continental U.S., across the entire nation. Uh, and then when different parameters of the Earth's atmosphere are viewed view together, uh, the synoptic scale then creates these large-scale weather patterns, which help us with the predictions that we make. Okay, so here's a, a U.S., continental U.S. weather map. And you can see there's different symbols on these weather maps. So just to look at a few of them, um, we have low pressure. We have high pressure. We have numbers next to these pressure systems, 1032, 1001. So the pressure in millibars. We also have different fronts that we'll get into and talk about. Cold fronts here, uh, warm fronts over here. So those fronts help determine our weather also. Now think back to the last unit that we talked about also when we talked about the westerlies or the winds that blow in the U.S. These weather patterns tend to move from west to east. So if we have low pressure, just focusing on Michigan, if we have low pressure near us now, this low pressure system is going to move to the east and will eventually be replaced by this high pressure. Um, so when you look at these, these weather maps over time, the synoptic meteorology, um, where time is what we're looking at, the, the given time will determine which, which type of pressure system is affecting us um, for a certain area of certain time. Okay, so we already talked about Zulu time. Here's just a map of the different time zones in the entire world, 24 different time zones. Here's the Eastern time that we are affected with here in Michigan. And then we have Central time, Mountain time, and Pacific time in the United States. Here's a scale that breaks down the, uh, the different time zones by daylight savings and by standard time. So right now we're in daylight saving time mode. After uh, the beginning of March, we switched to daylight saving time. And in the Eastern time zone, again, we subtract four hours during daylight saving time. Um, in the fall, when we go back to standard time or EST, Eastern Standard Time, we then subtract five hours to determine the Zulu time. Okay, so here's a little um, bit of review, but also maybe a little bit of new stuff. We looked at a little bit of high and low pressure and how that determines our wind and wind direction and wind speed. But the origin of wind is that wind is simply air in motion. We can measure the horizontal speed and direction of the wind. And remember that we always give the wind direction from where it's coming from. And then just a conversion here, because we're more used to miles per hour with driving and anything else we do. Um, they, they give the, the speed of wind in knots on weather maps. So to convert from knots to miles per hour, they're, they're pretty close, but one knot, you would multiply that by 1.15 to determine miles per hour, or one knot equals 1.15 miles per hour. So if we look at this, because you'll, you'll view these on weather maps also, this right here, again, we, we determine wind by where it's coming from. 
and we go through the feathers into the circle or into the station model. So these winds right here are coming from the northeast. If we look at a um, northeast southwest compass, so they're coming from the northeast. And then to determine the number of knots, we add up these flags here 10, 20, 25. And then here's a description of what all these flags mean again. So if we look at this weather station model right here, the winds are coming from the south at five knots. The vertical direction of wind is small compared to the horizontal, and that's where low and high pressure come into play. Okay, the exception to this is that sometimes thunderstorms will have very strong up, updrafts or downdrafts. Rising air cools and condenses. That's how clouds and precipitation form and sinking air warms. So we can compare it to this weekend, this weekend, especially yesterday, very cloudy, rainy, some snowflakes mixing in and also very windy. That was low pressure over us. Low pressure is air rising and repla being replaced by, or actually flowing, this rising air is replaced by high pressure, most likely to our west, flowing in very quickly. That air rises and forms clouds to form, or causes clouds to form. During high pressure, the air sinks, and because it sinks, it's being pressed towards the ground, that most likely, like today, causes sunny skies. Okay, so here's a weather map with both high and low pressure on it. Remember what we talked about with the Coriolis effect and why things spin and, and the, spin the way they do in the northern hemisphere. But on this weather map, we have low pressure and high pressure. These lines around the pressure systems are called isobars. These isobars sur surround high and low pressure, and an isobar is an equal unit of pressure. So along this line right here, along this line right here, all of this along this line is the same pressure. And then this would be lower pressure because we're approaching the low pressure. But all of this along this line is the same pressure. It's just lower than this. All of this along this isobar is the same pressure, but it's lower than these other two. And then with these lines, again, same thing. An isobar connects areas of equal pressure. As you go into the high pressure or get closer to the high pressure, the pressure along these isobars rises. Okay, so high pressure, the value of the pressure increases towards the high. On weather maps, they increase by increments of four. So if we go back to this right here, if this is 1,000 millibars, this one would be 1,004. This one would be 1,008 millibars, increasing as you go into the high. If we decrease as we go into the low, if this is 1,000 millibars, this would be 996 and 992. So decreasing as we go towards the low. Most sea level pressure that we look at, and we talked about this when we converted station model pressure, but most of the sea level pressure falls between 980 and 1040 millibars. Anything below 980 is a very low, low pressure system, and anything above 1040 is a very high, high pressure system. Okay, so here's those isobars again, and the increase by increments of four. If this is 1004, if this isobar is 1004 millibars, this one would be 1008, 1012, 1016, 1020, in 1024. You may need to, you may need to um, highlight these. You may need to highlight these on a map. And I'm actually trying to pull up, there it is. So, or you may need to not highlight, but you may need to label these on a map. And if you had to, again, they just increase by increments of four. So either approaching the high pressure or approaching the low. So here's 1004. 1008, 1012, this one would be 1016, 1020, and 1024. Now, also, if they ask you to label where the low pressure system in is, remember that the pressure drops going into the low. 
So just look at this map right here. You should be able to label where the low pressure is on this map. And it would be right up here. Okay. And if we were to label this isobar, this would be 1,000 millibars. The closer the isobars are drawn together, the quicker the air pressure changes. Or to put that simply, the closer the isobars are together on a map, the windier it is in that area. Okay, the change in pressure is called a pressure gradient. If the pressure gradient is changing very quickly in a smaller amount of time or a smaller space, that creates a pressure flow or more wind. Pressure gradient is just the difference in pressure between high and low pressure. And as the change in pressure increases, the speed of the wind also increases at that location. So let me show you that in real time right now. We go to this College of DuPage site, and we'll just go GFS and the continental U.S. And you can see here, if you're looking at this map right here, where the windiest part of the map is. Okay, remember, these isobars right here, where they're closer together, is where the windier part is. So they're closer together right here. It's windiest right here. And it's windiest out here where they're close together. Where we are in Michigan today, we have a little bit of a break from the winds from yesterday. Okay, here's that low pressure from yesterday moved out. Here is, uh, let's see, another low pressure system out here. And this is high right here. And you can actually look at this. Let me get rid of this little mouse right here. What the? Let me get rid of this little mouse right here. And then if we place our cursor over this map right here, this is 1025 millibars. Watch as I move away from it. It drops all the way up to 985. And then again, 1025, as we move away from it, it drops to 982. So we're actually in the middle of two very low pressure systems and we have high pressure overhead or close to us where we are right now. And that's bringing the sunny weather that we have um, that's occurring today. So watch as we move forward here. And then as you look at going through tonight into tomorrow, what would you expect the winds to do? And if you said increase, that is correct. Here's the low pressure. This is a low pressure system. Look, it's 979. So that's a very low pressure system. You can see the very strong winds up here and actually all around this low pressure. Here's high pressure in between the two pressure systems is where we're getting the winds. So low pressure spinning counterclockwise, high pressure spinning clockwise, and here's the winds in between. So this is tomorrow morning, Tuesday morning. And if we actually look at a map right here, you can see low pressure, high pressure, and then that low pressure. So these have those labeled on them. Another good one is the pivotal weather one. And going to the models, GFS, and here they are right here. The high pressure over us today, low pressure that was over us yesterday, and then the low pressure up here. So this actually labels the pressures for you. The COD, the College of DuPage site, you just have to put your um, cursor over it and it will tell you the pressure systems. Okay, so here's another map with low and pressure, uh, low and high pressure labeled. Uh, remember, low pressure spins counterclockwise. And here's another thing to look at here. You can actually see the wind directions change around the low pressure. Okay, because the low is spinning counterclockwise, winds from the northwest over here, winds from the southwest over here, winds from the southeast and north, northeast and north. So the winds also change around that low pressure system. Around the high pressure system, it spins clockwise. And you can see the winds changing around the high pressure system clockwise. Okay, high pressure, here's what we just talked about, and we've kind of been focusing on this. 
High pressure, the direction of the wind is clockwise and away from the pressure system. Low pressure, the direction is counterclockwise and towards the pressure system. And then here's another model showing the surface. Low pressure, spinning counterclockwise and rising. High pressure, being pushed away clockwise. Forced down and being pushed out. So as this air is rising, the low pressure, this air being forced down, flows into it. Okay, and it creates a, a convection current. Rising, sinking, flowing. Remember, even when we talked about sea and land breezes, the air flows from high to low pressure. Okay, a couple other things to end with. The PGF, the pressure gradient force, is that force that tries to equalize pressure differences. And that's why as it's flowing from high to low, we get those strong winds. This force causes high pressure to push towards the low. The Coriolis, the Coriolis effect, the Coriolis force and friction determine the flow of the wind. And then that property of mass continuity just states that mass cannot be created or destroyed. So air cannot pile up at a given spot. As the air is being pushed down by high pressure, it's flowing somewhere else. It's flowing into the low pressure that left us yesterday. Okay, so here's a, a diagram that shows that low pressure spinning counterclockwise. High pressure spinning clockwise, air is flowing from high to low. Rising, sinking, flowing from high to low. Okay, and that's it for your synoptic meteorology lesson. Um, we're going to do a couple of activities, and we'll, we'll touch on these topics throughout the, this week.